Game two, what do you want to see different? Um, honestly, I think both teams actually, like, I think both teams played really well. I think I you agree. just got to execute a little bit better if you're eager. I'd love some more kills, but first of all, let's go into picks and bands and see if they switch things up this game. Still looking to go in. Benji made it out. Xenotron knocks over the wall. We'll take out Ionic. And now dashing Xenotronics. Borno. Xeno finds a double kill. Face to face, turning back around, passing the jungle though. He just two shot him! Trying to look to try and dash him, but the ball's already there. And Benji recognizes that, doesn't use his dash, ults in place, gets the stun, turn around, kill 2v1! On your screen, Denial versus Ego. 1 0 in favor of Denial. Are you surprised by that result? Not too surprised. Um, I kind of expected Eager to either 2-0 or split here. I don't think I didn't think Denial would 2-0, but they won the first game, and it was a very close matchup, and they could 2-0 here. Realistically, game one, Denial took the early game in mid and in the dual lane. They held that lead for a while. The second goal for you is when Eager came back into it, and then Eager played the chess match really well. Yes. The difference was Closing they, the let the, they went off the pace a little bit, and then Denial just brought their own chess game into account. And, and it was and it very hard for because they had, they had won the chess game, but the thing is they didn't have any any more chess to play, right? Like, it was 35 minutes in the game. No one's really focused on the gold no tower anymore. Left anymore. There was no towers. I think they had, like, one on the left-hand left -hand side, side yeah. but, like, they, they couldn't force that because the fire giant was the point of contention. Well, then when it came to the team fights, it now seemed to work it out a little bit better, and Mass for me was Man. very very influential in that, as well as Benji being a very good frontliner. But back to picks and bands again. Did I'm not going to change anything up with their bands. I, I, I suspect they'll have the same um, pick style once again in the early game. The, the question is, is Eager going to respond the same? Zeus, one more time. Zeta Trunks had a blinding game on that. Let's be honest. He's a new guy. He's a guy who went to mid lane, went to Hunter for this team, got replaced in the Hunter role when Vicium turned up out of the blue, and then he got benched, and now he's playing mid lane. And last game, he had a great performance. Solid. It, it Absolutely was, solid. It was honestly the timing on the relics, the biggest thing, avoiding so many. I don't think he died once in that matchup. And Eager, they're not going to go back to the wheel. It's going to be Fenrir instead, so they're looking to put someone out of position. Now, it's an early Fenrir pick, though, right? Yeah. But is that an issue to and be the, early? And they're going Scylla as well. They don't want that band away. And this is a character I think best can simply hard carry on if he can make sure to not get too far behind. Scylla, Fenrir. Denial up next. Well, they went with Capri last time round as well. It is still open once again. Shadow Q had a very good game on that one. And I believe it was Apollo that went alongside that as well in this first phase, I believe. What was it? It, it was Naja, Naja and, Capri. and Capri. Well, if it's not broken, why why fix it? Why try and, ch why try and change it? I mean, it's a little bit of a different team comp here, but I, I do like the Naja against the Scylla. Once again, you could maybe combo it out. But I think Eager here, they, they know this, and that's why they have Fenrir to where... If Sil is taken to the sky, Fenrir can kind of just jump in and displace the team in the back line. So and in response. Denial, they're just going to grab the Awilish uh, away. And to the, very good against both Scylla and Fenrir. Because the ultimate can Elegant. get both of these characters. Obviously, Fenrir with the Unchanged, you can grab him out of that. Same time, Scylla with the Sentinel, you can grab that her as she's it, using it's that It's well. pretty hard to time the, the it's Scylla not dash. Yeah, it's, not, it's not as easy as some of the slower jumps like, uh, say, an Odin. But it, it's very effective, yes. and it's closing the gap on someone like that as well. I mean, Scylla will go to that Sentinel, wherever it's positioned. You know where, you can you know where she's to running that position to, yes. and then chase down as well. Ares will come out, though. And the funny thing is, Aurora did a little interview with some of the production boys okay. a little while ago about Ares versus a Wheelish. And he was saying, like, a Wheelish is very, very good against Ares if Ares misses the chains. Like, it's not that easy of a matchup for Ares. A lot of people always thought Ares was a great counter to a Wheelish. It's not necessarily true, but he's chosen to go for that here. Bands uh, in the second phase is going to be coming through here shortly, and um, it's not Thor again, don't we, guys? Yeah, no, it's not Thor twice. I mean, it's OP and stuff, but I don't, I doubt we're going to. I don't know. That. I would, if I could ban Thor twice, I would ban Thor twice. So neither team has picked a hunter so far. Sol was what we saw out of Zatman last game. Apollo came out from Vicium. We'll see what the difference is this time round in terms of where we'll go. Zatman, that's that's the third game we saw on Sol. I'd love to see him on the hunters again. His Sol was very good. I agree. He got a lot of damage in that game. I think highest in the game, even yeah, even after, did. even if in the loss, he did a lot. But I just. I never really shouted his name out. You know what we usually do? He gets a lot of There kills, was nothing, man. right? I think he stole that gold fury. That it's was it. actually going to be them that ban out Sol. And uh, it looks like... So here's the thing, too, is Eager have full control of this, where they can choose who they want to counterpick, um, whether it's Divios or Zatman. And they can also choose if uh, who they want in the first phase, right? So if they, if they want a hunter, they know exactly what yeah. hunter they're getting. 
So I think Divas would definitely get less pick. Yo, here's here's the thing too, right? I think they're gonna pick Hunter because Divios will play Fenrir solo if the matchup is favorable. Good call. Good call. I think they're gonna pick Hunter because of that. They could just leave the jungle open for DJ Pennicus. We'll see where that ends up. Well, with the Soul Band away, I expect potentially another Hunter coming out from Eager here one more time. But who will it be? They're gonna ban away no. Amaterasu. So, so Amaterasu folk. So Bologna not really looked at so far today. Uh, surprisingly enough, she actually has a pretty low win rate in the SPL, but. I mean, I'm not exactly sure if that's, you know, the winning teams or the losing teams that have been picking her up primarily for safety. And Robin going to be banned away from Divios. Will Eager go into the Hunter, or is that basically a guaranteed Fenrir well, in the jungle? Divios' stats will stay at seven for Robin this season so far. He came in already playing that seven times. Didn't play that's game incredible. One. Won't get it for game two. But they did leave a Ratatoska. Normally teams are banning that away from him, but I guess Benji's quite happy to deal with that. Uh, Apollo going to be locked in, so the global power is over to Eager this time in that dual lane. I think the duo talk at the moment from the Hunters and what we can see from the games we've seen so far today already is Apollo, Hoi, Sol. They're your top three. Top three out Done. and out right now. Will that change in the future? More than likely. There's the Bologna for Denial. It's been um, the top pick for Benji so far this season. And looking for their Hunter. It's going to be Rom picked up, so hasn't seen too much play. Only 13% picked and 3% banned. And I think the bans were kind of very early in the season. Last pick coming in for Eager. Are they going to put the Fenrir in the solo, or is oh. Divio's going to be taking something else? It's, it's going to be Sun Wukong. Kong. Okay. So I like Sun Wukong. And the reason, the only reason I think Sun Wukong right now is viable is Ox form. Everything else doesn't matter. It's simply Ox form and how powerful the knockups are on that ability, right? It's. It's a guided knockup that lasts for quite some time, and you can hit multiple people. And knockups are the strongest form of CC in the game. Okay, let's see how this one works out. Then denial up one to zero over Eager. Can Eager come back in game two? But it just wasn't enough. DJ closing the gap there into the sash. <laughs> This game was dead even less than five minutes ago, and now it's two Phoenixes and a triple root from the best. Crush coming through, and that's going to be another kill. Zatman's double triple as well. He will ricochet for a double kill! Once again, we're going to tune in straight away now with Eager and Denial, both looking very aggressive at the beginning of this game. You can see it's actually Eager that give up the aggression side of things there as Denial got there a little bit earlier. And to be fair, the Abduct is going to be the most powerful tool there, I want to say. And uh, Best throws out a crush, forces them off, and that's going to be a Soul Stone onto him. And I think he, did he go Power Pot as well? I think uh, he's waiting to buy the Power Pot. I mean, he did that last game as well. But I, would, I would suspect. Well, DJ has a Power Potion. Mast has one. Xenotronics just used one as well, both with Soul Stone early on. And that's what kind of, that's what the best needs on Silly Early Game. He's got the Power Pot, but he's also got Soul Stone. He needs to have some extra clear help here to deal with Xenotronics' is clear on that Zeus. On your screen as well, we've got another giveaway for an Odyssey chest. Uh, redeem that at promo.smitegame.com or in-game both work. Hashtag tag Allied Strong in chat. You got four minutes and 45 seconds left. 44, 43, 42. 41. 41. Buff spawn and Aurora is in position with the best at the beginning of the game. Um, as I was saying, mid lane clear is definitely in favor of Xenotronics here. The difference is, I guess, I want to I want to say DJ and the best are a little bit better as a pair. I, I mean, here's the thing though, is honestly, uh, with Soulstone, Power Pot Scylla, Crush is actually clearing archers that only level three, which is not something we ever have seen in the entirety of Smite. Normally it takes until she's level eight to where she can clear waves. But game one, you saw what Xenotronics could do with that original engagement with his power potion at the start. He bursted best so early that they picked up first blood pretty much on the first engagement. Not this time round though, with Scylla, he's a lot safer. And sitting further back, left half, he's being contested as the, the solo laners go at it once again. Nobody gonna get control of these solo camps on the left though. So far. It was actually eager. Sorry, it was actually Denial that got the rights. Yes, and uh, the Soul Landers actually both getting very close to deaths. They have their power potions, or excuse me, their power or their potions available, and uh, it's going to be Benji to get the better of that one. And he's going to collect his fire elementals. Uh, 
as his reward. And here's the advantage for Denial now. They stopped Eager doing that left hand harpies. Now they can swing around for them themselves. Eager have to clear out that midway first of all. But there's a rotation coming in from Eager. Aurora's already on the way round. And Denial recognizing that. They give up the left hand harpies. A great call from the dual lane of Denial to let them know Aurora was on the way. And that's always very dangerous is if a support starts to rotate early. Uh, a lot of times it doesn't happen because it's very dangerous for the hunter, right? If the support just leaves him, he could get piled on. But because that man had so much lane presence right now, and he's up against a romp who doesn't really have the super hard initiate, it was safe for that to happen. It was safe for now, and you can see as well, Aurora has taken Blink one more time on this Ares early Russian. on, which you see it quite a lot, to be honest, on Aurora especially, but you want to see it on an Ares early on. Those level five pulls can be very, very impactful. And DJ Pernick is going to steal away that boar on the right-hand side of the meantime. Both soul laners battling it out. So he'll uh, help Divios there a little bit. Not not helping Divios directly, but he denies some well, this golden is actually, XP from this is actually Fish. helping out DJ Pernickus as well because he realizes they're going to lose the trade early on in this lane. So what he can do is allow them to just push it in slowly. And as he's doing that, getting farm elsewhere and still getting back to mid to soak that experience with best and then head into his own jungle to clear out as I, well. I mean, losing the trade early, it looks like what Divios you? doesn't think so. One more hit, it's going to be a first blood. It's soloed, Benji. Well, is it solo though when you get some more cards? That is solo. There's two clones. There's two of them. No, there's a single clone. There's two, right, there's two of them though. That's there's he two got of them. solo. That's a solo. That's he duo. Got solo. Get duoed. Benji, yeah. 1 0. Devios gets off well with the first game of Sumo Kong this season for him. And uh, Blinken by Aurora was level 5. Would have been very dangerous for both Shadow and Vedshi, uh, Vidium if they got picked by that. Guaranteed deaths, basically. Guaranteed deaths. Warrior tapping now online for Devios as well. Look at DJ. And Benji only going to go back with tier 2. And where is. DJ, he's behind this team now as they're pressing in. Best will be waiting with that ultimate if they can find an opportunity, but DJ recognizes he's not going to find anything for now, so instead, swing around and pick up the farm. He really wanted to force that fight onto Xenotronics and Mass, but a little bit worried there, and Best taking a little bit of a poke from Archers. DJ in position here, still right behind if they want the Wombo combo, but they're just going to concede those mid camps. Quite funny that I think DJ, if he would have recognized that the Feather Step was going to go off that early and they'll still be alive those camps, I think he would have jumped in because there wasn't much of a follow-up left for them. You saw Chain Lightning was down as well, but right, do go to down. Left will take a little bit longer. Is DJ going to steal away the blue buff with the help of Devios? Thanks to the pressure Devios got early, and Benji's not going to be happy about that. And, and DJ actually picks it up knowing that Devios is going to be able to get his own blue buff. Forced to ult away, though. Runs to the wave trying to get a little bit of XP, but he needs to be worried. Uh, he turned around. He thought he was safe. He has his jump, though, but no, there it is. No, he got what he did when he turned around. He wasn't thinking he's safe. He had to be careful of the knock up coming through from the Awelix, but it didn't come through in time. But there may be a turnaround onto Benji here, who's overstayed his welcome. Guess what, though? Shadow Q on that Capri, making an the impact once more, but Devios thinking about it. The ult finds three. Uh, one immune comes out, one. but there's the reset. Finds the second hit, but Mast still has enough health to walk away. And it's going to be a one, excuse me, a one for one on both squads. So DJ actually turned around because he didn't want to get knocked up more than anything else. But so you can hear that come out. That's, that's true, but you, gotta, you can't always guarantee that you've heard it, right? So you turn around, you make sure, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm not going to get hit by that. But instead, he got hit by the Bologna roll, which allowed the follow up. And there was the pickup onto him in the end. Luckily, you're going to turn it around to make it a two for one. And Zapman's rotation from left means they don't lose the left hand harpies. And uh, Xenotronics here sitting in the mid lane. Still has his power pod. Has yet to back. Actually, neither mid laner has backed. Uh, they've been pretty safe in their positioning for the most part. And uh, just going to continue to farm up. Looking for that Dynasty Plate Helm, I'm assuming, once again. And he's going to have enough gold for it, too, after this wave. Did make Xenotronics lose a couple of creeps there in that wave, which is quite smart. They realized that Mast had to go back to base in a wheelish after that engagement in right. So they just froze the wave for a second or two, let the team get in there, then cleared it when the jungle respawned once more. So small little plays just benefit. Neither of the mid laners actually gone back to base just yet, continuing to farm up. And uh, Divio's here. He's got a little bit of a lead, not that massive considering he was he did get a solo kill first blood, which is worth 500 gold. And he's only about 300 ahead of him, so Benji's recovered pretty nicely for the most part. Yeah, Benji's doing fine for himself at the moment. Now got the Warrior Tabby online, and Divas will be slightly ahead in the build towards potentially the Breastplate of Valor again, or the Nemenium. We'll see where that goes. Master's hanging around there looking for an opportunity, but instead he just soaks experience and can head over to the left. But he steps on a ward as he goes over. Doesn't have vision of that at the moment, so well aware of eager of Mast location. And a Sentry Ward on Zapman right now. They have no other way to counter that Gold uh -oh. Fury Ward. And Mast is constantly look. Oh, I think he, he knows so there's close. a ward there. 
Is he torn in? No, he's back in. I thought, I thought, a, I thought he was a back and then it looked when he turned around and yeah. held his hand to his hand. But Benji going to get hit by two chains. And now he's going to get burned dead. and ulted. That's a death on Benji. And there's going to be no comeback from Denial. They're not in a position to look at anything else. Why, why is Aurora the soul aid, right? If I'm Benji, that's what I'm thinking. But it's really intelligent to come over and lock yeah. him down. They know there's no purification. All they have to do is force Eagles rally. And then immediately Aurora's going to ult. And Benji was dead there if he doesn't Eagles rally away. Oh, Zenatrix is in trouble. Going to get picked up, purifies away. He ults to try and create. A zone for himself will create that zone. Shadow Q was there to try and help out, but Zatman crashing in. Got a force to ult. He has to beat himself though to get away. Jingle Bang comes out, but Fisium trades out Pern with the snipes. That was a misplay coming out from Pern there. He actually auto attacks the air, slowing him down and guaranteeing that Vedium hits the shot, and he did just that. And what looked like a clean kill for Eager goes the other way. Xenotronics once again survives. Barely. Again. Barely. Better that man, Shadow Q that that man, that man tried to surprise them there, uh, but Shadow Q doing a quick 90-degree uh, turn, able to get that ult off just in time, and then force purification with on the that man as well with the abduct. Yes. Forced him back, and now Vishim there looking for some aggression in the jungle, not going to find anything. Will return to his lane once more. And one of the reasons of we saw him over in the solo lane was because of the, the wave clear Apollo has early on with that throwing dagger as well, and, and they're so beautiful combining just nicely, just continue putting the pressure on this wave. But Vishim on Rama, not scared to go aggressive and look for poke. But the, ro the rotation there. coming in from the, the, the three-man core of Eager, he quickly mm -hmm. runs away. Shadow Q, going to call that out. Also going to counter ward on that gold theory, but Vision still the way of Eager right now. And Mast has had a pretty quiet game. So far, so good, though, for the boys of Denial, to be fair, and Eager. Because we talked about Eager's three-man core. Well, let's look at this developing three-man core of Denial here. Xenotronics, Masked, Shadow Q. These three combine him very, very well together as well. And a lot of it, too, for me, is Xenotronics and simply just how well he's played, considering this has been his first pro league so far this spring split. Him and him and Skeleton were the new guys onto the squad early on, but he's since developed into a very competitive mid laner, a lot of it coming from his just simply raw mechanical skill, able to avoid a lot of ganks I, when he plays these unsafe mid laners. I call it positioning more than anything It's both. Else. The reason it's positioning is because that's from a hunter mentality as well. When he plays that role, you've got to position yourself well on the hunter. And at the moment, the mages play a lot like hunters. You have to sit on the backside. You generally self-peel more than anything else and expect the rest of the team to go aggressive. And you've got to sit back and wait for the opportunity. And Looks at the Gold Fury one more time. Pulled in his DJ. Purification was a little bit late there, but he will get away from the danger zone for now and force the reset. Still has his ult, though, which means it's, it's very dangerous for Denial to try and force anything with the Awilish ult down. And Benji, once again, forced to defensively ult away as Aurora rotates over to the soul lane and continues to bully him with Divios. Now, I don't want to get you too excited right now, Adonis. I'm excited. What is it? Three more kills, and we've already at this point of last game. Pernicus goes in with the ultimate. Not going to be able to pick anybody up. He does pick up Mass eventually, but look, the chain. Shadow Q is waiting with the ultimate if they need it as well. Zeus creates a zone on the back to Xenotronics to create some space for his team and keep Devios and the rest of Eager at bay. But zapping again and a great ult one more time from Shadow Q is going to keep him alive. They're constantly forcing this ultimate though, which is the important point. Divios takes to the sky, going to get a little bit healed up uh, from Somersault Cloud there and both teams disengage once again. And I thought... Come on, man. I thought <laughs> I thought it was going to be like someone no, I, picked up something crazy. I went to jinx it. I, I, I went to jinx the game. I'm like, guys, we're only five kills away from more kills the, the, the last thing, game. The thing in this match, though, is like it's been very competitive, right? It it's has. not like it's not like nothing is happening. It's not like Europe, where more specifically Fnatic last year, where they just like took 22 minutes to even have a single fight. I'm not going to respond to that. Europe is slow paced. Not so much this year, though, to be fair. A dignified... Uh, an actual response, but Aurora once again on Benji, and Benji realizes if he ults, he's going to go down, so instead he's trying to beat his way out of it onto Aurora, and Aurora's in trouble! Aurora should fall! Benji realizes it's the only way he can survive and at least trade it one for one. Beautiful coming out from him, and because Aurora's dead, Denial, they're going to force this gold theory. They know they're a man up. Crush actually doing a lot of damage, but the oh, best is crippled out trying to get away. Vedium, he's looking for the snipes. He doesn't know where he is. He, he knows, knows he's behind the, the trees, though, and that's too wide of a shot for best to avoid. The first shot is so easy. May look at Pernicus here, but that man a bit overextended there. But Devios isolates Vishim. Vishim will fall down to the so beautiful of Zatman, but Xenotronix trades it out with the detonate. That's going to be a two for two overall uh, when with Benji dead. No, two for three if you can include a roar dying as mm. well. So Denial evening up at the kills. Five to five in this this full, game. These teams are very close in skill. Full shout out to Benji, though. Like, I, I was saying it as I was casting it was... He realized he can't get away because if he tries to ult, he's going to get ulted by Aurora immediately. So what he has to do is just fight. Like, okay, I'm going to die, but maybe I can take you with, with me. And it, he did. 
And Take him out. still, though, does trade out, which is, I would say, probably in the benefit of Eager a little bit because it is a support, so Aurora's not too worried. Can we actually highlight over Aurora? I want to see if he's leveling bolster defenses uh, more than anything because we started no. to see this coming up from Raffer, but no, he's going for the more damage-oriented build. And I think that makes sense with kind of his mindset this game of ganking Benji. Well, realistically, Aurora and Perdiccas are the guys that set up this game. They're the ones that are looking for the picks and looking to set up for his team. Rafa, when he plays that sort of style with bolster defenses on the Ares, he allows adapting to yes. be making the plays. And Emelito is very aggressive and looking for plays too. And he can also rely a little bit more as well on Dimmy to look to make the plays. So he sits in the backside and creates peel, but he doesn't need that extra damage coming out from the same flesh. And uh, actually out-leveling DJ Pernicus. It really seems like Aurora has been the jungler more so than DJ this game. Just with how many rotations and ganks we've seen come out of this Ares. Over to the dual lane once more. Oh, oh it's that a Gold Fury. Aurora, Ace from both Aurora. teams. Root. Crush hits onto Shadow Q. Meanwhile, Pernicus picks up Vishium and Vishium gets ulted by Shadow Q immediately. I'm a monster! Was just off the mark. The ult is coming out from Aurora though. Great response from Vishium to take to the sky to stay alive for now. He tries to return some damage with the snipes and get away from the danger zone. As Xenotronic's got a great ultimate off there to create a zone of peel once more. Aurora's isolated though and Mass trying to pick him up. If Benji jumps over the wall, Aurora very low and it's going to be chased out by Mass. One more hit. He finishes him off. Meanwhile, uh, I think Vishim. it's Zap in the air right no, now. It's Zap in the air, yes. Vision was returning from base as well, but Zap decides not to go in. There was one talking point there as well. When Aurora was getting picked off there, Xenotronics got one auto on him for one stack, and he held that stack to make sure that they could confirm that kill until the very last second. Then he detonated to try and look for the kill and secure it for himself. And that was really that was a beautiful response from Denial to counter engage on to Eager there because uh, honestly that that looked very clean from yeah. Aurora, right? Aurora holds his ultimate even though he has three stacked up because he knows purification's still up. He throws the chains onto Shadow Q as Eager are trying to isolate. I believe it was Xenotronics on the side there, but the revive comes out from. From Shadow Q just on barely yeah, in they, time. They looked at the Vision. 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 Didn't manage to find it, but back to the solo lane once again, trading out Bellona versus Sun Wukong Divios with breastplate and going for transcendence one more time. So he I mean he's going for that cooldown and damage boys. Divios uh, has his ultimate, so I, I think he he's his mindset is like, I'm very safe with this god. So mm. I, I like as long damage. as I position myself well, uh, well I'll be fine. Nine thousand damage as well for Divios. Can we just check in Divios' build here as well? I'll say in um abilities here. Just want to see what he's actually maxing with this because actually fully not many points in Jingle Bank here. No. Uh, looking for the Master's Will. That's pretty surprising. I'm assuming that's just to help him clear the way because it does do a little bit more damage than Jingle Bang. It does have those slow Is it got least early on. Is that a reason? Uh, maybe. But uh, he'll have uh, all three maxed out here very soon. Divius is always doing the weird stuff, man. Well, I mean, he's like the Zalia of yes, NA. He is the best way I could describe it. And now he's going to actually look for the boar as well of Benji's. But maybe the blue buff, first of all, it is about to spawn. It's just flashing now. Divos didn't recognize that. Yeah, you can see how he actually used his 72 transformations there just to clear it out with the tiger. He recognizes the blues up now, though. And DJ Pernicus is here to help secure Great it. But the time. problem is that the rotation is coming in from the rest of the Nile. And uh, quick turn. And Mast actually not able to get that. I think he got the feather stuff damage off, but he was stuck around the corner. Is so couldn't chase him. And now Shadow, Shadow Q. Q. This is a good focus onto him as well. I'm a monster. Comes out, but he's not dead. He gets a revive. Benji ults in as well. Xenotronics is there with the detonate and the ultimate to secure a kill. They tried to turn to Xenotronics knowing Shadow Q does not have his ultimate available, but Zapman crashes into Shadow and not in Xenotronics. Devios still trying to find that on the back as the rest of Eager are forced out. I believe it's just Devios and he's on the back, or was that just his clone? It was. It was just Even the clone. I got distracted by and, and DJ Pernick is the only one to die here, but it's still Eager surging forward. You could see four members of them grouped up in the mid. They know the blue buff is happening. They're trying to find someone. There's a roar. He catches the chain onto Benji. No Eagles rally, so he can't get away. Divios closes the gap. There's the crush. One more hit, and Aurora finds the kill. But Mass actually came over to try and oh, help him. Trouble. Chains are going to be up soon. No chains available just yet. The Mez was the most important thing from Zapman to secure it. Snipes from Visham all on the best no. little head. But it wasn't enough for the killers. The pull comes off from Aurora. Only catches Shadow Q, and the detonate will secure the kill on Aurora for his discretion. This game is just a straight brawl right now. Eight kills to seven. Denial leads. Gold is dead even as well. Only 300 separating the squads. There's barely any experience separating them either. It's just these teams are very aggressive. And honestly, it's been the mechanical skill for me. And honestly, the timing of these ultimates and these abilities, everyone has been 
perfect. Well, All 10 players. On your screen is another code, guys. We've not had time to say it just yet. You've just got just over four minutes left to claim it. You can do it. It's an Odyssey chest for you boys at home. Promo.smitegame.com. Go to that website to claim it or claim it in-game as well. Either one will do you. As the Gold Fury looked at by denial there, but realizing the Scylla was around with that ultimate one more time. L look on. what DJ is building into because he's been kind of the main target. He's been the one that's dead the most outside of Aurora immediately into runic shield solely to counter this zeus he's like he is having none of it at this point so he's basically he's very defensive the whole way through i mean he's, he's going to be building full tank and cdr i would like to imagine i guess that's the way i mean let's look at, let me look at player damage as well how low is he he's lower than capri at the moment i mean he's just kind of been jumping in he's and then dying bot, right? he, he did a lot of alt bot early but it, it's been very far hard for him because of Kind of, Benji has a CC immune ult, right? Uh, Vedium has a CC immune ult. Shadow Q has the revive, hit on multiple times. All these players, for the most part, have purification if they don't have that CC immunity. So it, it's been very hard for him to lock someone down. The benefit that does help him is if he does go in with the Ragnarok and find a pick, he's going to force purification, which allows a raw to find the real pick. And that sets the best up for the big Ima monsters, or even Devios to head to that backline himself and look for the picks too. Devios going to catch Benji, looking for the back. Benji well aware that he got spotted there, so. Gonna get slapped with that stick one more time, but he's not too worried about it for now. Let me not some cooldown. Go for it though, by denial, he's gonna be free. Very uh, clean. Mm. Uh, completely caught off guard there was Eager. So was I. Shadow Q zones them as well. Best going to try and secure one of those harpies like he does successfully. And it is actually the Void Shield oh, over on DJ instead. Very aggressive on Vishim. So beautiful, just ever so slightly off the mark. He was almost in range for it, but Vishim stays at max distance. And gets the safety now, and Devios versus Mast again. Mast blinks over the wall, looks at the plan. Devios and Devios, well aware of it, walks and, away. And Devios is doing such a good job of controlling Benji, right? He just he got the solo first kill, and then he had a roar come over for two more, and then there's since then been really nothing Benji can do. He's starting to build into magical defense, and he's and just trying he's to stay alive. Well, now he's baiting because he knows DJ's here, and the best is here as well. Mast aware of the situation with Suku and. Bl Teleport from Benji comes out, but that's a power play situation for Eager now with Devious having that teleport up. The bad news is the golf here has already been done. And uh, DJ going to counter ward here. So nothing really going to be happening on either way. Blue buff spotted out by DJ, but he backs away immediately. He's only level 12. He is, it's been actually very hard for him to farm. He's been rotating, looking for these ganks, but they've been unsuccessful. You can see 0, 3, and 0. Even though Eager have 8 kills, or excuse me, 7 kills, he's been dying so early in engagements, he hasn't been getting the assist gold or experience, which is why you see him so far behind right now. And by so far behind, he's equal or even with the supports. Devios has to use the clone to get away and regen himself from the danger as he was looking to contest that blue buff. Doesn't find it, though, and instead... We'll lick his wounds and head back to the solo lane. And uh, four are going to be grabbed here uh, for now. The supports both have picked up Shell as their second uh, active. So looking for that kind of more tanky oriented builds. No meditations uh, from them, although Divios does have one to help his team. So. And meditation against the against Zeus is very, very useful as well, just because the detonate is where he's looking to secure the kill. Get the meditator for the right time and, well, you're living. He also he does a lot of area damage, right? Where it's like, even if multiple players are only like one or two stacked, like the the meditation should negate most of that. And just healing up your team to full, very pretty effective, you know? Pretty effective. Hunter builds coming out well. This time around, Zatman on Apollo, not Vishium. And he's going for the Assy instead of the Devourer's Gauntlet. This game looking like towards going for that Chins as well. As Devious gets a Grest on, but does not panic at all there whatsoever. Could have just ulted instead. He's hanging around, and he's going to force the ultimate, and then an ultimate from Mastin response, but that's allowing Benji to get picked up by the Ragnarok, and now no escape is here from Aurora. The crush is on point. The best is going to look for the pick, but Shadow Q is going to keep him alive for a second, and my monster off the mark does not connect. There's a jump in as well from Devios as Zatman crashes across the sky. Devios picks up Benji. Shadow Q surrounded. He will get away for now thanks to the route, but Benji, sorry, not Benji, the best will get through the Sentinel and find the in hand. Two picks real quick quick by eager utilizing Zapman to come and secure the last of the or one of the one of the two and that was just really well played uh mass honestly with a big misplay there that's a mistake yeah he actually pulls uh <laughs> he pulls dj closer to he benji did. who was trying to get out and dj's like 
Thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Mask. I appreciate it. It immediately pushes him back to Divius, allows the rotation to come in from the best. Yep. And everything else happened after that. And now a fire giant attempt. Mask, the only one in position well, to try and defend. I tell you what, to make up for a Chained. bad mistake, can you find the pick on the fire giant? No. And he will fall down too. Eager. Get the fire giant on all five members for free. And you can see the Visham didn't even manage to get over from that left hand side there. Get the tier one tower or get to this fight instead. And so eager now, with an opportunity at 20 minutes in to start cleaning up some uh, of these I towers. mean, at this point, who is going to dream hack? Like, Denial... I have no clue. Like, the, even though Denial is losing right now, the game's not over. They could easily turn it. They actually still have the gold lead as well. But, like, these teams are so competitive. It really seemed like Eager was the best team in North America based on recent results. But Denial has been putting it mm -hmm. to them. Found the first game win. And even in game two, very competitive right now. Red buff attempted to be defended there by Denial. And I believe it was defended. But they're not going to be able to get a chance no. to pick that one up. Because Eager are in their jungle looking to strip it away and siege the left-hand side here. Zatman already pushing the wave in under the tower. And he's going to get some support from his team now as they're hanging in the jungle now. And I love what Eager's doing. They just have these players in the jungle. They're just, they want Denial to try and push forward so they can force the fight. Eager, they're going to back though. Only taking a tier one. Don't want to risk a fight right now as Benji pushing the right hand side. So what are they looking for? I mean, Benji was split and pushing right inside, yeah, but they've got teleport available for Devios to go over and defend it if they need to. The tier one tower is pretty close to being down anyway. Why wouldn't you look like maybe looking for a tier two? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I, I'm assuming they have some gold in their hand that they wanted to spend on some critical items. Uh, they, that's, why, Shins, that's why. Shins was just finished on Zapman. That's why they did it. DJ DC'd. Oh, that's well, what that's, it was. So that's, that's what, what the pause is for. So DJ DC, so uh, okay, just quickly, just rest, go back to base, spend this gold, and then we'll siege. And and, and like I said, Shins finished by Zapman. Still very okay. powerful item. Uh, but right now, denial. Uh, on the back foot, they don't have fire giant. Gold is dead, even though. Mm -hmm. So it is. This still could go either way. Realistically, I'm, I'm favoring Eager in this position they're yes. in right now with how this is going. The, the big talking point of that Fire Giant was Mask's misplay. And he had a great game one, but it was such a, it was in a weird way, it was a small misplay, but it developed in such I, a big one because the fight that followed all came off that one thing. I, I don't know if he, yeah, I don't know. That was very awkward. Maybe he thought that DJ Perdicus' alt was down, or maybe he just like, DJ's in the air. But, like, that's one of the things too, is like, he was like, why did DJ jump? This is a free pull. And it was kind of like, you don't have long to kind of figure that out. You have a split second to decide if this is the correct player or Exactly. Not. And he was in the air. He went for it. Didn't work out for his team and got punished for it. And there's a goal for you in their favor too. Talking about DJ a little bit more, you were saying he was very far behind in terms of level. Well, he started to catch up a little bit, catching up to mass one level behind him now, ahead of the supports or even with them, what's more? Gold as well, right? You can see it mm -hmm. immediately goes into the Pestilence, just wants those protections. Uh, specifically against you know, Tronics, he wants to actually start living in these engagements, and he's closed the gap. He's going to be frontlining here on this tower. Actually got caught on the route, but still Smart jumping away. Still got the tier 2 tower. Devious is on the right-hand side, already pushing minions in. Benji there to defend already, but Benji needs to be very aware that there could be a rotation round the back from Eager and a roar. You can see him in the jungle there. It's Fernando waiting to try and go in for that blink ultimate if he can find him. He's on top of a ward, though. Uh, he, I don't think he knows that that's there that's not a century of eagers and now the team's going to be rotating over to this left hand side a single tower remains now will eager do this or will they force a phoenix i think they want to force a Should phoenix but if it's phoenix, not though. there they're going to get the tower so take take the tower in tier two and left but then the question for me oh, is this. after the tier two do they go for right hand side davios is actually still pushing which uh benji's gonna have to defend now although both have tp well they do both have tp but benji will be able to get right to that tower which is a giveaway sign for his for the enemy team that he's going to be coming in however what will they force DJ, DJ Pernicus back. was pinged out, so Denial know he's there, and it's going to be masked in the jungle, meeting him head head on. This is an and interesting fight between the two. DJ forced to jump away, but with that shield being down from Xenotronics, it gives an opportunity for Eager to look for some aggression on the tower. Shadow Q going to block some shots from Zatman to try and keep it alive, but now Devios is here with the rotation from Benji too, and Devios still going in, looking for potential pressure onto Mast. It's forcing and creating such a good zone that the tier two does fall, but is Devios going to get out? And now the team actually rotates immediately over to this mid lane. Right-hand side as well has minions, but it doesn't look like they're going to get it. Now's the time for them to decide if they want to pull back. Fire Giant uh, is now falling off. They have a decent amount of gold in their inventory, and I think that's the call. Let's spend it. Let's get ready for well, the next Fire Giant. I mean, look at their ultimates, too. Devios is always down. DJ's always down. And Rosal's down. You can't try and force a Phoenix against a team like that, especially when the Fire Giant does wear off, like you said. But Denial are going to try and stop them from backing if they can. And DJ may get picked off on the right-hand side here, because a Wheelix is there looking at him, and DJ's not been aware of the situation. DJ's in trouble. I mean, at this point, he honestly just needs to die, right? Uh, Actually, gets over the wall, gets knocked up, though, and Ooh. somehow managed to stay alive.
alive, and now Denial's grouped. I'm really surprised he survived but that, Benji, but here's Benji. Is it amongst the pigeons for now? Going to get the bludgeon off onto his head. Visham in the sky, looking for the snipes. One, two, the armor from Benji secured the second shot, and will make sure he falls down. Pernicus is now down, and it's Ego on the back foot. As per uh, sorry, Zatman had to use purification. Aurora has to defensively ultimate, only pulling Benji in. Benji may fall down here. No, of course he won't, because it's a Capri, but he's not got Tower Agro. He just got it back in time, though. And now Tibio surging forward here. It's a five on four. Numbers to Denial, but I'm a monster is still available. And it looks like Denial just going to get this tower. So honestly, Eager doing a good job of holding. They could have lost a lot more there if they weren't careful. I tell you what, though, I think they would lose a tier two here if they wanted. Well, what are Denial going to choose to do? Another pause comes out one more time as well. Ten to nine is the scoreline. And after that little engagement with DJ Pernicus back on that right-hand side there, you can see that Eager, bit of a mistake there. And Fire Giant has spawned once again, and most of Eager are in base, so Denial have an opportunity to maybe make a power play if they really want to and force the Fire Giant. They are still down about 6,000 gold off of Eager's Fire Giant. Uh, they were able to get uh, all the towers on the map, so uh, it doesn't look like they want to do it, however. So they got most one. of them went back to base as well. Yeah, Denial went back, got a tier one tower after that little skirmish on the right-hand side there. We're starting to reach the sort of build level where, well, clearly Devios thinks the next fight is the biggest fight because he's bought a 450 power oh, wow. potion there. And I think that's just because he realized the next fire giant is so important that extra damage should factor in. I, I think a lot of it's because there's no towers down or, or no towers left to take, which means that's if, if Eager can win a fight, right, like if they only drop a single player or two and they can wipe most of Denial, they could probably just walk in and win the game. I don't know about win the game. I mean, it depends, it depends on the situation, I'm saying. Yeah, definitely Phoenix is. I'm not sure if they've got the, the damage just yet to really bring it down, but that power pot will help in the team fights a little bit more. And a lot of people underestimate the power of getting a power potion for a team fight, just for a team fight, because that could influence it enough. I mean, he is like 2,000 gold ahead of Benji as well. So it's kind of like, at that point, it's kind of like, even if I even if I don't make use of this 450 gold, right? Like we lose the fight or I die or I can't find a kill or whatever. It's, it's still kind of the fact that he's so far ahead in gold that it's not really that big of a deal. He's still going to be the item ahead he needs. Well, Eager have fire giant control right now. They're clearing out wards there. Shadow Q around here in the area. It needs to be a forefront and mast on the right hand side there. A little bit split of denial in three different avenues here. And if Eager do find a pinch on one of these little clusters of players, they could look to try and force this engagement and on the right hand side, that's exactly what Devios was looking at here, putting some pressure onto Mass, but it's him who's being focused down. Devios is in trouble. Devios gets ulted, but gets out of the danger with his clone. He did force the ultimate from Benji, though. The focus is on Benji. He has nothing to get away. He already used Regal's Rally. There's a chain, and he's trying to chase deep, but Aurora gives him up. Divio's got a back to base. Same with Benji. They both but have... No, they don't both have. Benji doesn't have teleport for another 60 seconds where Devios does. So both ultimates being down and meditation still online for Devios. There's an opportunity for Eager, but I don't think they realize that teleport's on cooldown. Blink from Aurora. Two chains. Three chains on Vicium. Still chasing him with the same in flesh. Zatman following suit with the soul. Beautiful to keep the pressure onto Vicium. Forcing him to roll away. Now Vicium has to go back to base. That was really good on him to hold out on using his relics or his ultimate there. Uh, very smart but could have turned bad for him right hand side. It's going to be Zatman still here, and it's going to be Benji once well, they again. They know he's got no he ultimate no this ultimate. time. And there's DJ going in as well. Oh, no, I tell you, his ultimate is back up on the back, though. There's a fight going on. As you see, Mass trying to create a distraction, does a good job of it. But Zatman's going to give chase with DJ, looking for the pick on Mass. It's going to go over to DJ Pernicus. The Sanctuary comes out as well as the purification Zeno's from Xenotronics. He will get picked off, but luckily, once again, Shadow Q's in position to help him. Look no escape to Zoro. He's going to find two. DJ jumps forward. He finds the kill. And now Shadow Q getting aggressed on as well. Vedium trying to find the last snipe onto the best, but he managed to get out. That's a clone. Divio's not going to be able to finish off this kill, but... Benji's still hanging around, 1v5? No. Not anymore, he's not. The Phoenix is gonna fall in mid lane now as Eager can pressure that with only two members of Denial left alive here. The Phoenix should eventually fall. They're taking a long time to do it without minions. Oh, no, actually a lot of Eager are very low. They are gonna successfully... Uh, no, actually no, the, no. the Phoenix Half holds health. and now Verium surging forward. He wants to fight, but he he's backs gonna off and honestly, that's not that big of a loss for Denial. They lose three members, but they hold the Phoenix. No Fire Giant finished off, and the game is still pretty even. So it's an interesting engagement, that, because Benji, first of all, Benji goes in. Benji falls back to base. Vishim then gets picked by a roar, but doesn't die, holds all his stuff. But then the team was actually trying to help him out so much that Masked got... F they got basically. baited. Well, Mas Mas had to go in. That was the key. Mas had to go in and create a distraction. Bad news is, Zatman and DJ both collapsed and him picked up that kill, which led to Xenotronics nearly dying. Well, Th eventually this might be too. one of the worst games we've seen out of Benji so far this season, right? He gets soloed by Divio's first of all. I, I disagree. And then after that, I mean, 
I mean, he's on a, he's on a, an average I mean, he's game for me. A two, the, the last two big fights coming up for Eager were actually Benji's fault, where he gets caught and he tries to force things when he's not in a position to do but, so. But think about the fact that he got focused in this game early on, and 2v1 when Aurora comes over, realizing he can't do it, wins that engagement there. He dies again in the side. But so outside of that, what good play has he well, had? Well, he dies over in the side. Well, he's creating a zone the whole time. He's, I mean, he's just in that last zones. engagement, he baited his team and they lost three players. Now, did he bait they, them, though? Yes. How? He was. He goes forward by himself. DJ picks him up with his ult when he has no ult, and then he dies. The team tries to save him. They get split when all the teams forced back, and then Eager just pick him off one at a time. Now, obviously, Denial weren't able to get that much off of him afterwards. But I mean, still. From my point of view, what he did was when he went forward there, he saw that Zatman and DJ left that engagement and carried on with it. But back into the game we go. 13 to 9, 30 minutes in, and Fire Giant is available and been started up by Denial. And uh, Eager, they're going to try and get in here. Fire Giant getting pretty low, but it doesn't look like Denial want to force this just yet. They're looking for the fight, and it's actually Ares getting, or, or Aurora actually finding Benji once again here. Oh, uh, Benji, trying to keep the pressure on there. Drops a little bit low. Chains came out from a raw once more, but... Divius is underneath. I think they know, though. Is did he... he walk over a ward? Oh, yeah, they yeah, know. he did. Going to knock him up as well. Put the pressure on. The ult comes out, but he's still alive. And in the end, he's going to take to the sky and get away with his clone once more. This is going to allow Eager to go in and look for the picks. And uh, they're looking for Xenotronics. He beads immediately, and Divio's going to ult out as well. That Zeus ult creating a pretty good zone, and now both teams are going to back off. Ultimate's forced out from both sides there. Only the Kepri revive of, uh, available for Denial, however. 9 to 13 still is a scoreline, but that little engagement goes in their favor. The best, Aurora and Zatman all still have ultimates. Only Shadow Q has his available at the moment, so he may have to create a zone for his team. At least let Benji go in and try and give him the ult back out again to make sure they don't start this fire jam, which looks, that's what Eager has begun. But they reset it one more time because they realize Zap is in base. All three players circling around here. Neither team wanting to force anything. Zap does have ult if Eager can find a pick, but it looks like they're just going to wait for uh, their leader to come back in. And now full build for him. He's got Rageblade. He's got Deathbringer online and the Chins. And actually, Zapman is ulting into this fight. Ulting in, but do they recognize it? That's the question. I don't know if they do, but they may have spotted him on the right-hand side, potentially. But Gulf Fire Giant started up. Shadow Q, the first one to recognize this. Looks for the root on the best. A rod doesn't focus him. They'll focus Benji, though, who ults very early. The best half health, but a good mess from Zap will stop the bludgeon. No escape from a roll. will pull in two. There's no follow-up from the team, though. The Ammon Monster did come out in time, but it wasn't enough for the kill, allowing Shadow Q to revive his teammate one more time. Xenotronix still under pressure as Pernicus picks up Mast as well. Xenotronix is still alive on here, but not for long. A roll will be able to pick up that killer that man takes out benji too and aurora he's gonna be able to chase this one down three dead on the side of denial here maybe four if shadow q can't survive this he's getting chased out by brutalized dj pernicus's jump is down no one actually trying to close the gap there is the jump forward but not a stun vishim actually doing a significant amount of damage to divios i don't think divios realized how much damage he's doing right now well, that man Pressure's mid lane because of the opportunity he's got. Plenty of mana, plenty of health. Looking for this Phoenix with the minions there this time. This should be a Phoenix for Eager, the first one of this game. Trying to tie this series up at 1 1. Devios getting low. Vishim going in for the kill. Is he got enough damage? He's going to go for the snipes. Meditation was good. Maybe Ooh. last snipe doesn't connect. And waiting below is Debated. that man and his body box completely. It's going to be a Phoenix and another kill. Four dead. This should be at least another Phoenix. But I think Eager want the win. Oh. They choose to back off though. Mast spawning in three seconds. They don't want to risk it. They are playing a very safe game. Uh, they say safe game, but Devio's played risky business yeah. there. He had so low health and was like, yeah, come up, go up in the air, Visham. Go up in the air, go up in the air. And as soon as you do, I'm going to meditate, and then we're going to kill you when you land. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, Divios right now has 27,000 damage. He's actually topping the charts, 7,000 above the next highest, which is Zapman right now. That's incredible. I mean, someone comes out of the meta, though, right? Hey, man, he's out of the meta. I mean, he was only below the Vamana Osiris. I don't know, man. I just, yeah, just let Divios do whatever he wants. He's going to play Robin. He's going to play Ratatoskr and Divios. And no other soul in wanted to play any three of them. Oh, that's a funny thing. Like, they ban out Ratatoskr, so he goes, all right, Robin. They ban out Robin, he goes, all right, Ratatoskr. Like, well, I don't want to play Rat this game. I'll play Sun Wukong. Uh, and it really hasn't even been this massive, like, disruption coming out from, like, mass knockups. He went into this early transcendence. He has Titan's Bane as well. He's simply just been diving into the back line, doing damage, baiting abilities, and then getting off his ultimate. And when Denial, the one time Denial tried to collapse on him as he came underneath because they had a, a really nice ward, 
Mantle of Discord gets popped, they all get stunned, and all their cooldowns are down, and they got baited into a fight. That's a big talk about Mantle and Discord. We don't talked about it too much, but that did make an impact on that engagement in the jungle. Twice. That went off and just helped them out so much. Once again, though, Fire Giant is still alive. Devios, though, this time round is on the left hand side of the map, split pushing here. Has his teleport available? And the one story I want to bring up here as well is he's on Sun Wukong, and there was a game where he actually backdoored and won the game when his yes. team was going to lose with Sun Wukong and his clone friend. But in the jungle, we've got a fight going on. Mast looking for the pick on Best, who is very, very low, but not dead is the answer. Is now Benji turns to the fight as well. Vishim was looking for the snipes, but out of range is the best. Best will live to fight another day. Uh, Divios getting isolated here, and actually three members surrounding him. Vedium, he has his jump in a second here. He might be able to find the cripple. There it is, but there's Mantle of Discord, and Divios walks out once again. Diam is working again. out so well it's for him. so useful. So well for him, because just as they collapse, he does manage to get away with it, and didn't even use it. Well, he did use his ultimate, actually, just before that, so... Ends up losing that. Shadow Q going to try and get Fire Giant control and make sure Eager aren't up to no good around here again. 35 minutes in, this one's been a, an active game as game one, but a little bit more high in kills. And uh, yeah, some some players are actually dying this time. Uh, Denial, still not full build, however. We're 35 minutes in. This is very rare to see. There are actually a couple players that are pretty far behind in their squads. Not even Vedium has finished his, his uh, last item now. And Eager. Uh, it's just, I think, the best remaining, and he's looking for that Soul Reaver. Well, last game we said that, you know, the longer this game goes, the respawns take a while, so one good team fight will be good. Abduct onto Aurora, he's going to take some poke. The, the Aegis came out a little bit late there, I should OTP. say. Aurora's just circled around. Aurora going to ult in response. I'm a monster, he's ready, going to eat, hit onto Mass, but Mass gets ulted by Shadow Q. Back to safety one more time. Benji on the front side, disarms that man for now and keeps him away, but Pernicus is going to pick up another target. It's Benji, and Benji should fall down here, trying to get away. Meanwhile, Devios disrupts the front line, so the back line of Denial, to stop them getting involved, and now Eager can chase on. Benji caught out once again, and now more Pembers could fall, but it looks like Denial successfully able to back off there, and Eager... They're very low. This is not going to be a free fire giant. It looks like they're trying to bait. Divio's backed right on top of a ward. And so Denial, no, he's out. Oh. Crush comes through. Aurora just throwing out some chains, but it doesn't look like the team could follow up in Eager. They want to force this finally. And remember, the crush from Best will root multiple targets if it connects with one of the all group together. And you saw that there. Fire Giant's taking a long time to bring down, though, as Devios is keeping them busy with a roll. The snipes from Vishim hit a roll, but it's not enough damage to bring him down. Crush avoided there from Shadow Q. Fire Giant does go to Eager, and now this could be the opportunity Eager Sh need. Shadow actually, oh no, Shadow Q just barely get out, but Xenotronic's isolated by himself as Shadow Q couldn't come over and help because of a roar, and now. Eager, finally, in a position that they can try and force something. Xenotronic's dead for 50 seconds. Benji dead for another 10. The Middle Phoenix has respawned, but it's very low in health, and the team's looking for it. That's that's lucky that the Phoenix has just respawned at that time, in my opinion, because if that was down, that's a second Phoenix that would have fallen as well on the left, or even Fire Minions would have flooded through. They could have potentially looked to end 4v5. Instead, that's bought Denial one more chance of defense here, and left-hand side, Devios is very far forward, ults early to create a zone, but Benji gets a great ult on the back, forcing purification on two of the biggest tankiest targets. Crush was zoning out. I'm a monster. It's primed. There's a big dog for the best. He's going to get one. The second one does not connect, thanks to the ultimate coming out from Shadow Q, but he will find a kill for Zatman. Phoenix on the left will fall. We're going 1-1, one, one, Adonis. This... <laughs> This set has been incredible. It's 22 kills to 10. Make that 23, 5,000 health on the Titan and Eager. They're going to trade out with Denial. Man, North American SPL has been good this season. Denial game one looked amazing. Game two, Eager came out to play. I mean, early on, it was Pernicus that was really behind for a long part of that, yes. but I feel that game, that fight over on the right-hand side where Mass pulled in was a big turning point. That, in that I think, is when Ego really started to take control of the game, and after that, they were repeatedly picking off Benji. Like you said, he was the only front line as Shadow yeah. Q had to sit in the back, and they're like, okay, let's bait the ult. Every time the ult was down, Benji would walk forward again, DJ would ult him on cooldown, or a roar would ult him. They just, the second Eagles rally was down, they're like, all right, we're just gonna kill you. I must was like 1-5 in the end of that game as well. Not but the Eager, they're too. the ones that come out on top in this one. It's been a fantastic game between these two teams. And for me, it, I guess one of the talking points is definitely Mask to this game, because Mask game one, he set up Xenotronics up so Beautiful. much with that Nisha, so many ultimates over and over again that came to the play of the, of the team. And this is a game one. This is actually just the start where a lot of this does come down to the best getting poked out very low. And then look at this, a single minion left and Mast finds the ring bounce and it's a guaranteed combo with Xenotronics. Really beautiful setup. And then once again, actually finding his way out of this with the heal. Look at that purification that Mast did there. Just as the old oh, no, this, this is the read. This is the read. Hey, and DJ, he dead. 
great read as well. But the purification on the Roar's yes. blink. He immediately purified knowing the Cataclysm was coming as well. And once again, this is a blink onto DJ. Straight in, straight up, sets up his team. And I think after that, this is what forced the Fire Giant. Uh, oh no, this is actually pretty early in the game. Later on, is it? once again, his focus turned to the best, where he found these ultimates, locked down these players, and there was nothing the best could do. This is the, the final kill that I think closed out the game. Uh, as a lot of Eager's damage was locked away. That was that was the whole the, the whole play between them, and that yes. game was fantastic from Master Xenotronics and obviously Shadow Q. Game two though, bit of a different tale, honestly. In game two, he went a Wheelix, but he didn't have the same impact in that game. No, uh, and uh, he did have that misplay, like you said, that kind of turned. Everything. It's, it's so mean to call it a misplay, but it was. That's the worst problem about it. I mean, we see him in the jungle here, level 12 in this game. It was 5 to 5 at this point. And he's trying to do what he can and keep himself busy, but he still ends up getting picked. This is, well, uh, this is a good play, yeah, this, yeah. This, this, was, this was the early good play. Um, and this one, I think he kills Divios as well. He gets the, the really nice turnaround here. I was just having a little look at some of these plays coming out from this game as a raw was doing good. Oh no, he Divis dies here, I think. On the front side. Yeah, he he goes in to help out his team, tries to buy a time, but the Mez from Zap was what got him picked up down there as well. And uh, here's him trying to defend the Fire Giant. He actually got pretty close, but the uh, the chains from Aurora... I mean, that was, that was, that was he had thing. to go in on that yeah. one. And then finally, we're going to also see the late death against Pit. Now, this was at the end of the engagement where they were all diving in, looking for picks, and Mass goes in deep, and this is where Zap and Pern come over crashing in for him. And it just was very hard for him to really get things rolling in this game, too, on this Awila shit. You know, it, because, like, he relies very much on his front line to kind of sneak around, and the fact that Benji... Uh, really couldn't be that front line. He kept getting picked off. He kept getting his ultimate baited out. And then it's like, what are you going to do as a Wheelish? What are you going to do? And in the end, it, well, it's kind of the same story for uh, DJ in game one with the Wheelish. Yes. What are you going to do if you're behind? Very, very painful. But with that, let's go to the standings and see how this is impacting the week so far. And already, two games, two sets down, I should say. And you can see Eager sat in third and nine and five after Saw earlier on. And we have Enemy and Saw tied. And this is a true tie for first place as they have played already and they split the set. And they're going to be playing later this week as well. It's very exciting. But we still have a single game to close out today. You mentioned splits. And that's exactly what these two boys did. Luminosity and Allegiance did early in the season. Will we see a repeat of that in this final set of the day? And if you're we're looking for our newest caster, Anatoly. He'll be joining, uh, I believe it's you on the See? desk for that final set. Me and Tolly. We'll be up shortly, guys. After this short break, we're going to get ourselves ready for Allegiance versus LG. You better do too.